In this video, let's discuss about the theories of information processing. Designing instruction that incorporates best practices for information processing. The understanding of how the mind processes and stores information is invaluable to educators as they plan for instruction. If there is little to no understanding of the information processing skills of the students with whom one is working, it would be almost impossible to design instruction that contributes to high levels of learning and achievement. However, attempting to understand the myriad of theories of information processing and cognitive development can be overwhelming and contradictory. There are means of structuring instruction, though they can incorporate the best of all these ideas and in order to help students reach higher level thinking and learning skills, educators must draw from all of these theories. If learning is to occur, educators must ensure that new information is processed in such a way that it can be retained in long term memory. In order to achieve this, elaboration and connection must occur between previously learned memory and new information. It has been established that the more deeply information is processed and the more connections that can be made between new information and existing memory structures, the more information will be retained in long term memory. Therefore, in order to make new material meaningful, instruction must be presented in such a way that students can easily access and connect previous learning and experiences with the new material. One of the most often cited references to levels of elaboration for instructional purposes is the taxonomy of cognitive domain developed by Bloom and his colleagues and recently revised by Anderson and Crathwall. Let's discuss Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive domain. Bloom proposed that information processing can be classified in six levels each more complex than the previous. The first level is labeled knowing and simply requires a learner to repeat back what was heard or seen. This involves very little elaboration. The second level is labeled comprehension and requires some rudimentary levels of understanding that might involve having the student summarize or paraphrase some information. Again. This requires only modest levels of elaboration. The next two levels, application and analysis, involve more elaboration and show a significant impact on long-term learning when they are used during the learning process. Application involves using the concepts or principles to solve a problem, while analysis involves understanding the relationship among the parts and how they are organized into a whole. The last two levels, synthesis and evaluation, are the most complex and require the highest levels of elaboration. Synthesis involves putting the parts or components together in an original manner, while evaluation is the process of making judgments based on comparison to a standard. Research has confirmed that the first four levels are indeed a hierarchy, while there seems to be a problem with the ordering of the two highest levels. Anderson and Crathwall propose that the ordering is reversed, with evaluation being less difficult than synthesis, while Hewitt proposes that they are both at the same level of difficulty, though they incorporate different types of processing. There seems to be a consensus that both Synthesis and evaluation are based on analysis or the ability to compare and contrast parts of a whole and understand the relationship among parts. Let's discuss Sternberg's information processing approach. Another theorist firmly grounded in the information processing approach is Sternberg. Sternberg's theory suggests that development is skills based and continuous rather than staged and discontinuous, as stage theorists believe, and his focus is on intelligence. 
This focus on intelligence separates his ideas from stage theorists because it rejects the idea of incremental stages but rather suggests that development occurs in the same way throughout life differentiated only by the expertise of the learner to process new information first and very importantly sternberg's model does not differentiate between child and adult learning also he deals solely with information processing aspects of development and doesn't incorporate any facets of biological development into his theory cognitive development is viewed as a novice to expert progression as one becomes better at interaction and learning one is able to learn more and at higher levels development changes as a result of feedback self monitoring and automation in this theory intelligence is comprised of three kinds of information processing components number 1 meta components number 2 performance components and number 3 knowledge acquisition components in sternberg's model each of these three components works together to facilitate learning and cognitive development meta components are executive in nature they guide the planning and decision making in reference to problem solving situations they serve to identify the problem and connect it with experiences from the past there is however no action directly related to meta components they simply direct what actions will follow performance components are the actions taken in the completion of a problem solving task performance components go beyond meta components in that they perform the function also of weighing the merit and or consequences of actions in comparison to other options rather than simply identifying options sternberg's third proposed type of intelligence is the knowledge acquisition component this type is characterized by the ability to learn new information in order to solve a potential problem this type is much more abstract and may or may not be directly related to a current problem solving task this three leveled view of intelligence comprises the componential aspect of sternberg's theory but this is only one of three parts to his larger triarchic theory of intelligence sternberg's theory adds the components of feedback to theories of cognitive development this suggests that an individual's social interaction has some impact on cognitive development in fact one of the three parts of his theory is based on the context in which learning takes place this sub part of the theory specifies that intelligent behavior is defined by the socio cultural context in which it takes place and involves adaptation to the environment selection of better environments and shaping of the present environment the addition of social context as a factor in cognitive development links sternberg to the interactional theories of development of bruner and vygotsky these theories and others of this type are premised on the assumption that learning doesn't occur in a vacuum therefore one must discuss the social and cultural contexts of learning driscoll says of central importance is viewing education as more than curriculum and instructional strategies rather one must consider the broader context in how culture shapes the mind and provides the toolkit by which individuals construct worlds and their conceptions of themselves and their powers these theories all work under the assumption that new information can most effectively be learned if the material can be matched to memory structures already in place most theories hold that the mind contains some type of framework into which new information is placed this structure is multi-leveled and has varying degrees of specificity new information can be matched with compared to contrasted to joined with or modified to with existing structures this in place structural system allows for differing levels of complexity of information processing 
the formation of and continual building of these structures then is critical in order for learners to process information in various ways and at higher levels. Let's sum it up. One of the most fascinating and mysterious properties of the brain is its capacity to learn or its ability to change in response to experience and to retain that knowledge throughout an organism's lifetime. The ability to learn and to establish new memories is fundamental to our very existence. We rely on memory to engage in effective actions, to understand the words we read, to recognize the objects we see, to decode the auditory signals representing speech and even to provide us with a personal identity and sense of self. Learning is acquiring new knowledge, behaviors, skills, values, preferences or understanding and may involve synthesizing and processing different types of information. Memory is usually divided into three storage systems, sensory, short term and long term. We then discussed Miller's magic number. We pointed out how within STM there are three basic operations which are iconic memory, acoustic memory and working memory. Long term memory has been then presented which includes schemas etc. Then the principles of information processing was taken up and highlighted the limited capacity of the mental system and secondly the control mechanism is required to oversee the encoding, transformation, processing, storage etc. Then we dealt with information processing in learning and memory. It was pointed out that from an information processing perspective some of the most important aspects include number one brain changes brought about by biological maturation or experience number two increased processing capacity speed and efficiency as a result of both maturation and knowledge development number three modifications of connections in a neural network number four new emergent concepts arising from repeated self-organization as a result of adapting to the demands of a changing environment and number five increased capacity for problem solving and metacognition then we discussed about encoding which involves structuring organizing storage retrieval etc this was followed by theories of information processing which highlighted bloom's taxonomy and sternberg's information processing theory it was pointed out that new information can most effectively be learned if the material can be matched to memory structures already in place. Most theories hold that the mind contains some time of framework into which new information is placed. This structure is multi-leveled and has varying degrees of specificity. New information can be matched with, compared to, contrasted to, joined with or modified to fit with existing structures.